welcome to motherfucking uninfluenced. Fuck waiting 60 seconds to cuss. <laughs> now, guys, today we're going to get into some topics on some cars, talk about some stuff going on overseas. And uh, I want to talk about the recent review. I was thinking about this, and as Mike came in, he brought it up too. I want to talk about a Ducati, and we're going to get into the new Ducati too a little bit, which I need to pull up so we stay on topic. But So the new Ducati Mike has, I don't know if you guys know, but its red line is at 16,500. And if you've ever rode a big boy bike like that in traffic, you keep it in second, third gear, uh, and surprisingly to some of you non-riders, first gear. That's a gear you'll use every now and then. Maybe. Maybe. But if you're on the highway, yeah, you're going to get into more gears. But to do a good review for you guys where we're able to talk and do stuff and bring you that type of content, yes, some of the bikes that are grown-up men <clears throat> bikes, yeah, they're only going to go into second gear. Uh, hell, mine I ride around sometimes in first gear if we're just in, just because I'll ride till the exhaust noise is annoying to me. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, basically, if y'all like those kind of reviews – Put up something cool in the comments, not, oh, that second gear, and your ass is fucking riding a 10-speed and never been on a real bike. Because um, if you've been on a real bike, the two people I know that commented that actually said something was Burton and another person that actually ride the bikes and know what the fuck they're talking about and, of course, didn't mention shit. Yeah. And I know on your PlayStation and your Xbox, you're shifting real fast, but in real life, that's not how these things work, so... Just a heads up. Then there's the new Ducati. You want to get into a little bit about the re review or talk about the new Ducati first? Well, I mean, you covered it on the review. I would say if, you know, I mean, I get, we all like to fuck around and, and whatever. But, yeah, I would agree. Like, have some input other than, oh, you're in second gear. Like, yeah, fucking, or get your own bike and uh, you ride it and review it. And if you want to have it in sixth gear at 48 miles an hour, <clears throat> you know, doing 800 fucking RPMs, choking itself. Choke yourself, and uh, and I'll watch it and bust your fucking balls. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah, so Ducati's coming out with the new – you had one of these, right? The Yeah, we did the review on the, the, the original uh, V4 SP, which is an 1100. It's based off the S and then has carbon carbon wheels and um, some, some other carbon pieces. Not, it doesn't have the carbon swing arm and the um, – carbon chassis the way that the sl does but excuse me but it's also a, an 1100 <clears throat> and it's uh it's fast it's actually faster than the than the sl uh, in a straight line anyway but the um <clears throat> i don't I, to say that it's faster on a track would be hard to hard to say but um I, I think that the sl seems like it handles a lot better but this new sp2 is uh is an interesting bike because it's based off the new and improved S, which has better aero, a couple little tweaks to the engine, and uh, and some other stuff. So if I can find one, uh, I, I put a deposit down on one. I don't know if I'll actually get an allocation for it. My guess is probably not, because they're not going to make a ton of them, and I'm like third in line at the local shop. So we'll see what happens. But uh, it's a neat bike. It's a, it's a really good-looking fucker, and... Uh, I'm looking forward to it coming out. I'm not sure. Did they say uh, when, it, when it's supposed to come out? They haven't fully said. They just released the like, launch video of it. <clears throat> and I'm looking. I actually went to Ducati's site right now looking at the SP2. The one I sent you on Instagram actually had the Acropovic where the exhaust came up behind the tail. The one they're showing online actually just has the exhaust dumping kind of like yours. Now, so I wonder if they have a couple variations of the exhaust for this one. I don't think so. I mean, the, what I saw was the one or the other, either the stock, which looks weird. Mm hmm Looks similar to the uh, Aprilia RS660 stock exhaust. It's like this weird boxy fucking thing with a little, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why they do it that way, but. Yeah, it's just, I, it's just off. I hope that you can get the performance exhaust that's on the SL or the old SP because that shit's uh, awesome. I like the design of this one. Uh, it's not much different than the one you have from what I can tell, reading all the specs and every everything. Uh, something about it, though, it just really looked fucking cool to me. 
when I send you that picture. Yeah. Uh, Producer Bill, see if you can put up a picture of the Panigale V4 SP2. I'm going to laugh if people start calling Producer Bill. Um, really cool bike. Someone did mention, uh, so I'm going to go over some horsepower spe- uh, specs here. It's uh, 215 horsepower at 13,000 RPMs. That's, that's with the stock exhaust. That's with the stock exhaust. It's an extra 12 with the uh, sport exhaust. So it's going to be 227, right, mm-hmm. with the sport exhaust. It's probably going to be 100 <clears throat> foot-pounds of torque. Uh, yeah, I mean, high mid, mid-90s, I think 93 or 95 stock, and, yeah, up a little over 100 with the <clears throat> with the race exhaust. It's a good-looking <clears throat> bike. Of course, I like the black one you had a lot. Yeah. If everything would have been lined up right for me, I would have loved to have bought that bike just because the way it looked, it just – it's my type of bike, the way it looks. Yeah. It's aggressive looking. It's it's angry. Sounds good. Sounds really good. Yeah, it's a... It's a good bike to ride, too. I, I definitely like the SL uh, to ride better than the than the SP, but but the SP is a good bike. I didn't like the rear sets on it, which is an easy fix. But Yeah. I, the seating position and just the the way that it shifted and handled wasn't as, as uh, refined or as good as the SL in my opinion, but I mean, fuck, it shouldn't be for, for the price, the price yeah. difference. But. <clears throat> and they may change that. The, I would still say the worst rear sets was the first Ducati you got. Yeah. I fucking hated that bike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was just hard, very hard to ride, but yeah. And fucking hot. Yeah. Really hot. Yeah. Hotter than fucking balls. Yeah. That's it. That's a sexy motherfucker. Minus that red. I'm anti-red, if you guys don't know. Fucking hate it. Uh, 1,103 cc's. Yeah, that's a that's a bad bitch. What I loved about it was the tank. So yeah. I hope they do the same. I hope it looks just like yours did when it comes out, yeah, where brushed. it had that textured-looking aluminum. Yeah, brushed aluminum. Yeah, brush, exposed brushed <clears throat> aluminum. It does have it. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be the same. That's a bad bitch. Yeah, you can pull so many bitches on that bike. <laughs> uh, pull them. Where would you pull them? What uh, you had to tell them to follow me. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe get a hitch on the back. Something be like, follow me over here to this hotel. It's uh twenty bucks an hour. The bitch hitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really cool bike. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We'll see. Uh, see if we can get it in the lineup. Then I'll keep. Uh, I'll keep that in first gear for the entire review. Just. For you guys that love the second gear action. Yeah, I was reading those comments and I was like, you can tell the actual riders who know anybody who rides don't shift their fucking bikes out like that in traffic. I've been riding, I would definitely say 20 years and fuck. I think I hold your bikes in fucking gear longer than you do when I ride them. I'll fuck yeah. with a bitch almost to the red line all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, so much of it depends on the bike, you know, comparing yeah. it to the BMW as an example. that You know, it, it revs out at 14.5, 14, depending on whether you have the S or the M. And, and uh, But, you know, riding that, on, we'll just say on that same stretch of road, you know, there's times where I'm in third or even fo- fourth gear on that bike. Um, but, you know, the, the sound and the feel of it is – you know, overwhelmingly what I'm looking at. And now if I was just trying to be as comfortable as possible and, and as leisurely as, as possible, uh, I, I would have gone maybe into third, for sure not fourth. But um, in, in the interest of the review and revving it out and jumping on it a little bit, uh, yeah, I, I kept in second. I, I would not have expected that many people uh, to have uh, have such an opinion on uh, what fucking gear I was in, I guess. But, uh, you know, you live and you learn, so whatever. Shit, if they saw how you really ride, <laughs> fuck. That review would have been nothing but fucking wind if you're fucking passing by some shit. <clears throat> um, yeah, so there you go. The new Ducati V4 SP2. And two's for second gear. That's what the best gear to keep it in, so <laughs> fuck off. Uh uh, tr- then we got the new 2023 Lamborghini Hybrid V12. <clears throat> still without a dual clutch. Uh, apparently, it still is not a dual clutch car yet, which is fucking amazing to me. Uh, 
I do. I went back and I looked at it after I sent it to you, and I was like, "Look at this C8," and it was the Lamborghini. I I'm starting to really like the damn thing. Honestly, uh, the more I look at it, no, I'm not a. Y'all say this, we get certain cars, and y'all are, y'all are Ferrari fanboys, and now Matt has a Lamborghini. He's a fucking Lamborghini fanboy. No, I've I've said it over and over that the V12 in the Lamborghini is a great sounding vehicle. I did not say I like the Aventador though. Um, supposedly this is going to be the final series production supercar, blah, blah, blah. I believe they said that <clears throat> same shit with the Aventador. Um, so that leads me to another thing about you think Ferrari's, uh, super fast, their V12 is dead knowing that this is coming out. Kind of, I doubt like it. I say, I don't, you know, the, um, I'm still waiting on their, atrocity of a fucking SUV to come out. Not that I would get it, but who knows with them? I mean, they've, they've jumped over to hybrid technology. It seems full, full send. So I, you know, I think it's a flip of a coin, honestly, whether or not they keep their V12 in the, in the lineup or not. I, I could see them doing it to, you know, maybe compete with that and turning it into a hybrid also, or, shit canning it entirely and, and not even doing their, I don't know what they would put it in, I guess, you know, if they're, if they're yeah. not going to continue the 812 as a, as a frame, as a model, then I don't know what the fuck they would put it in. I mean, maybe they'll put it in the, the, uh, the SUV. Fuck, maybe it has it. I don't know. I haven't seen much on it cause I, I'm not really interested in it, but yeah, I think all the SUV has is the same as the Portofino, which oh. is a tuned down, F8 engine, if I remember right. Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, it's a cool car. I I hope I've read two different things. Nowhere in the articles have I seen they're going dual clutch. I hope because even their own. Uh, yeah, you don't. I don't see it either. Uh, even their own main buyers want a dual clutch in the Aventador V12 lineup. And they say it takes away from the rawness. Uh, I disagree. I think it adds to the driving fun of that car. It does wear out faster. A single clutch wears out quicker. So it's in the maintenance more. And that's probably a, what, ten fifteen thousand dollar $15,000 fucking repair every time. Uh, they are coming out with the new Huracan in 2024. Four, I believe, and it's going to be also an electrified V10 or a hybrid V10, um, which would be cool. Uh, they're saying 80% of what is Vag, the Vag group will be hybrid by, I think it is 2028. Yeah. Uh, especially their R series and their big cars like this. Uh, which is sad, but it gives me a little hope that we're not fully going to lose an engine. Yeah, you know, to the to the electric motor. Yeah, so I'm hopeful. Yeah, me too. I, you know, we'll see what happens. So much could happen between now and then, gas and oil wise, or electric wise, or nuke wise. That you know, I, I get the, the the track that they're on, but you know, who knows if we'll actually fucking stay on that or not. But <clears throat> yeah. Now I got to give our new uh, editor and producer some props here with the bullet points. Yeah. You mother bitch. Uh, yeah, we got bullet point. We fucking like some pros and shit. <laughs> if I can get a teleprompter over here, mm-hmm. fuck yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see how the actual model of the <clears throat> hybrid V12, I want to know the name of it too. Is it going to be the Aventador? Or are they just going to keep it? In their past, they always changed the name of them. Yeah. Um, It'll be called the Electrador. The Electrador. Like Zeus or some shit. Was there a... So he's big on naming everything after bulls, fighting bulls. Was there anything like astrology uh, of a bull? I mean, you could steal Taurus from Ford, you know. There uh, you go. (laughs) The Lamborghini Taurus. Yeah. That would be awesome. See, if go up just a little bit, if it looks somewhat like that, I kind of dig that because it's still aggressive. I mean, I wish they'd change some of it. Some of that front end's a little fucking funky, but 
like the light. I don't like that. It's a, it's a little busy. Yeah. If they would simplify that, that's the saying, I believe. I'm probably saying that wrong. Cyan? Cyan? Yeah, cyan. The uh, the front, the, the light looks a little bit flux capacitor-ish with that. Uh, yeah, it's their little uh, yeah. hexagon, half hexagon fucking uh, signature. So does the engine in the, um, what the fuck did we review last week? We talked about it, we didn't review it last week. The uh, NSX Type S, the engine looks like. I saw that black one in town. Some Back to the Future shit. Yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, things sounded good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it gives me hope, though. It, it honestly does. With uh, with the hybrid technology we have coming out, yeah, that we're gonna still have V12s, V10s. Uh, they can get more power out of the electric <coughs> motor with the engine. So it's gonna be cool. I just hope they go in and do the uh, dual clutch on it. That'll make it a little bit more of a modernized vehicle. Yeah. To me. Plus, you would think that that saves them on fuel economy. The dual. I, w- I would like to see a, a study on that, the dual clutch versus single clutch. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I, you know, my gut tells me it'd be negligible, negligible, but uh, who knows? It'd be it'd be yeah. a neat test to see if it if it does have any impact. Yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of cool. I was thinking, and I could be wrong, but the. Is the Huracan the only fucking one he didn't? Na- they didn't name after a bull. I have no idea. Uh, my uh, knowledge base of bull terminology is is I know lacking. bullshit. So, yeah, yeah, I bullshit a lot. But yeah, uh, I have no fucking idea. Let's get into the Subaru. I know that's your fucking shit. <laughs> I do like the. Uh, the WRX, but yeah, that article I sent, they're not going to do an STI yeah, version I w- of that, which I think is a huge fail. Yeah, I was reading on that, and and I, I don't understand it, because if I remember I'd have read on two different vehicles that you sent over. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so to me, with Subarus, having owned several of them, their entire lineup is very functional, practical, Purpose built, uh, and they're phenomenal cars. They're super reliable. They're durable. Um, they're well engineered and designed. And uh, is there a difference between engineered and designed? Mm. But, you know, but the uh, if it is, I'd like to know what the fuck it is. <laughs> Drop it in the comments. Yeah, and uh, throw in something about second gear while you're at it. Yeah, the uh, you not know, you know, I don't know why you would buy the WRX if you're not wanting the STI aspect of it, you know, to me, it seems dumb. Like if you're going to make the souped up fucking badass rally car version of, of what they, of the Impreza, you know, or, or what have you, why the fuck would you not make the STI trim? I mean, to me, it's kind of like as standard, like why have a WRX if it's not the STI? I mean, to me, they, they should be kind of, connected that way <clears throat> it just don't look right to me either looking at the picture of it to me when i seen a subaru uh wrx i always think the the little tail in the back and all that shit the cool yeah. the wheels still look somewhat <clears throat> cool but uh what it, was the horsepower on that one it's like 19 nah, you know the nah. most people when they use the term mutually ex- exclusive, they say things aren't mu- mutually exclusive. In t- in my opinion, the WRX STI and STI, or that that trim, should be like they should be synonymous. It shouldn't. Yeah. There shouldn't be a difference. I don't know why the fuck there is. Yeah. It says uh, we assumed we'd also get an STI by the end of twenty twenty two. That's not going to happen. Yeah, it's yeah, it just I don't get it. It's it's dropping the ball. Something else. A lot of auto manufacturers are doing right now uh, is dropping the ball when they're building these cars or designing them. They're getting away from, I, I would say, getting into the younger crowds because the younger crowds are going to want to see more shit like that. What's the first thing they're going to do to that car? They're going to want to soup it up. They're going to want to, well, shit, now I got to add a wing to it because they didn't put one on here. So by the time they're done, it looks like an STI. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a. Uh, it's a fail. Well, you know, I, I have no doubt that they've got like a team of fucking bean counters that 
<clears throat> have figured out that, you know, bottom line wise, price wise, money wise, what have you, mm-hmm. that it, it makes more sense for them as a company to not offer it or they wouldn't be doing it. Right. I mean, that's why pretty much every company does anything. Yeah. So there's a reason they're doing it. And, and I'm sure it's from a fiduciary standpoint, I, I guess yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Slap, slap me silly and call me fiduciary. The, uh, the thing with, with it is, is that, you know, it just sucks. I guess it, I wouldn't say it's, a fail on their part because obviously they know what they're doing. They're, you know, a massive you know, multi-billion dollar corporation that's been around for a long time and has a great reputation. So who the fuck are we to second guess their, their decisions as far as whether or not they're smart. So I guess maybe a better thing to say would, uh, it's not that it's dumb or that it's a fumble. It, it just sucks that, the, that they're not offering that anymore. Well, technically we made it our job to sit here and talk and shit. And talk shit about companies that have... Earth. Have a hundred X more time, yeah, or hundred X more money than we'll ever even dream to have, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, fuckers. Uh, yeah. So I think they dropped the ball on this one. Uh, but I've been thinking a lot of people have been dropping the ball. Maybe they'll fucking prove me wrong. I hope they do. I I like Subaru. I want to see Subaru grow more. I remember riding around in a Subaru with my uh, brother James. He had a old Subaru, cool little car. Jimmy with the Subaru. Jimmy with the Subaru. (laughs) Uh, Go ahead. I mean, I have an article. uh, I need to send it to Billy the producer. Robbie the producer or Billy the producer? We could call him everything. We just start. Jimmy, Billy, Robbie, Tommy, Timmy. You sound like the uh, Goodwill hunting fucking (laughs) brothers. We need to uh, get one of them word deals or the name books. Yeah. And just go down the list and do all of them. Yeah. Um, well, what was the other article that I sent her that you wanted? The to Acura Integra. Oh, yeah. Is that the other one you have pulled yeah. up? No, I've got another one pulled up that I didn't send you. It's the one I was talking about earlier. Oh, okay. It's about some Ukraine shit that. I want to get into some the of the cars. Ukraine shit. Uh, let's finish. I guess we'll do the Integra. Do you want to do that and then come back to cars? I do the Integra because this is cars and Ukraine, so that'll okay. be a good segue into uh, into Ukraine. Yeah, Ukraine, me, Ukraine. I think this is the one I was talking about that I saw a horsepower number of two hundred horsepower. Mm. Mm. It's pushing out all them big numbers. Yeah, a one and a half liter turbocharged inline four from the Civic Si with no unique parts. Acura says the software is different, but output holds at 200 horsepower with 192 pound foot of torque. That's identical to the Civic Si. You know, I've seen a, a number of Civic Si's, or maybe it's the same fucking concrete gray one that's always driving around. It seems like they're different. Maybe it's the same guy, person, they, them, Z, those. But uh, like they're always spicy. They always want to fucking jump jump oh, yeah. after it and fucking uh, and get some, which I I find uh, awesome. What's the car we always run into that always wants to race? Infinities. Infinities. Always the Infinity Q pick something. Yeah. Uh, What's a Q? You can be in a fifty Q seventy fucking anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about Infinities. Like, is it a little dick thing? Yeah. Is it you didn't get hugged enough as a kid, or you got smoked as a kid racing everything, but Oh, I smoked a motherfucker this weekend. But motherfucker, every, every infinity I ever come across, whether I'm in a on a bike, in any fucking car, just always wants to get after it. And and like it could be by by the police station, oh, out yeah. on the interstate, fucking in a parking lot, being a in a grocery store parking lot, motherfucker in in an infinity Q fifty is trying to get some. Mm-hmm. Out there doing donuts while you're trying to put all your groceries in the trunk. If anybody listening right now has an Infinity Q anything. Send him a picture of your dick. Yeah, do that. <clears throat> Next to a ruler. While, while you're slamming it in your car door of your Infinity. Because, <laughs> God damn. Any dick pics, <laughs> I apologize. Well, here's what I will say is they'll get posted. So <laughs> Yeah. Please share. Share at your own fucking risk because that shit's going viral. So we get asked all the time about cars, and to me, the Subaru and this are two really good cars for entry-level, good gas mileage with some little... 
and the infinity. Ain't that what I said? No, you said, you said oh, fuck the infinity. You said, you said this and the Subaru. Yeah, this, the Acura and the Subaru. <laughs> fuck, talking about- fuck that infinity. Uh, <laughs> the Acura and the Subaru for the price, they're going to go for mid 30s. Really, really good car. And the A spec, what's the A spec? It started in the late 90s. They were doing that. And then it was, what is it? The. Fuck, there's something else. The VTEC or some shit or some shit like that everybody used For to say. For the Acura? Yeah, they used to say my VTEC's kicking in or some shit. It's all from Fast and Furious mm. stuff. Throw some NOS in there. Yeah. But, I mean, f- for thirty grand, the type of car you would get with this or the Subaru, I think is a great fucking option if someone's yeah. looking to save some, save some money on fuel, have something a little sporty, and a lot of fun. The key to a lot of cars, y'all hear us talk horsepower all the time, and I just want to say horsepower is not what hurts cars. Horsepower is not what hurts motorcycles. It's the torque. So when you have a car like this where the torque almost meets the horsepower, that's engineering, making sure you're getting everything you damn near can out of that engine at the same time working together. You saying it's got a lot of juice for the squeeze? It's got a lot of juice for the squeeze. And that's <clears throat> strange for me to say, but if I was looking for a good I'm buying something brand new for a, a younger kid and say I'm wealthy as fuck and just want to buy them something new I know is gonna get them around from sixteen through college. I could buy either one of these yeah. cars. No, if I lose my ass, they can still afford the car because it's cheap. Fuel isn't that much. Insurance isn't that much. Yeah. And they got a really great car What is until they become adults. I'm, I'm going to look it up real quick. I would throw a 370Z in there also. Yeah, but not the Nismo. Uh, if the, you want a more sporty option, yeah, 370Z is a good car. The, uh, I think everybody who drives a Nismo 370Z or just sold one and got like a Supra or douchebags. Or their dads are. <laughs> Who are you talking about? I, I'm they, not uh, getting specific or anything. Motherfuckers, no. But yeah, if I mean, you drive a blue Toyota. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing them there, you know, 20, 30, mid 30s. Used. Uh, used. But so, the, I mean, new, they're probably a little little uh, outside the realm. Same with the Infinity. You know, the Infinity Qs are, are not $30,000 cars. I mean, they're probably close to fucking twice that, I would bet. But Dude, I drove one of those little fuckers. What is it, the... Q50, is that the four-door yeah. one? I don't know. Because I was looking for something at the time, cheap, uh, four doors. I went and drove it, and it was the S-Line mm. or whatever it was. That little motherfucker was quick for what yeah. it was. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not going to go up to a Ferrari and try to fucking race it. Yeah. Well, you, well, you, you would, might. You would if you were driving it. It might be in the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Yeah. Uh, well, the other thing I would throw in there is the Ford Focus STI. You, you yeah. can do a lot with those too, mm-hmm. um, and and punch them up a notch. But the crazy thing I I see a lot right now are these parents. There's a local kid driving a GT500, 17 years old, brand new Shelby GT500. While it's cool, you have that kind of money to give your kid something like that. That's the type of shit that your kid's going to end up hurt. Uh, to me, I think you. And this is adults, too. If you've never drove anything super fast, be careful. But these are great cars, great options for, we'll say, 40000 and below. Because once you start optioning the motherfuckers and putting shit you want in it, 40000 and below, these are really good cars, really good options. Uh, I like that blue on that fucking Acura, too. Bitch is sexy as fuck. But, All right, hang on one second. Hey, you can just set it down if you would, please. That was somebody with their <laughs> hand in his pants. Yeah, just just set it down. God yeah. damn it. Yeah. Yeah, but the the Acura, I think, is a, a beautiful car uh, for what it is. Yeah, they're they're great cars. Uh, a friend of mine, a former instructor and uh, dog handler. While I was there, a good good friend of mine has still has. Um, it's the uh, Integra Type R from like oh, oh, oh three, I think. 
uh, you know, stock, you know, still, still drives it regularly. And, uh, yeah, it's just such a cool fucking car. Um, it was one of the first cars, uh, I go back was ever, uh, kind of introduced to way, way the fuck back in the day. I mean, for, <clears throat> for the money, uh, this picture of this interior, that's fucking nice. That's nice. Yeah. For 30 grand. I mean, that looks like, uh, it looks like our trucks that yeah. are 65, $75,000. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and, and it's manual. Yeah, manual. I just know pretty awesome. <clears throat> I hate the way all these people do their engines now. Ford, everybody, they're getting lazy and not putting engine covers over all that mess of bullshit under the engine. Uh, quit being lazy, you auto manufacturing pricks. Yeah. I'm yeah. Really, yeah. Six speed. <clears throat> Hell yeah! It's a good looking car. Yeah. So. We'll have to wait for uh, Doug DeMiro to give us some uh, daily categories and all that on it. Yeah. Fuck Doug. Just go buy it. That's a good car. If you're looking to save some fuel and have a little bit of fun, the STI and the uh, Nissan. Hell, what's a Toyota? What's a good Toyota we could throw in there? Well, I mean, would you consider Lexus Toyota? Yeah. I mean. I like the Lexus uh <clears throat> Just told my wife this yesterday. The Lexus, what's that little one? The R, fuck. RC three fifty. Is that it? Maybe. It's the four door. I could be fucking. It's that the F Sport IS three fifty or whatever it is, and I think now it's a S four hundred or some shit. Yeah. But I love that little sporty yeah. looking motherfucker. Uh, yep. It's it's just cool looking. Hell yeah, it is. <clears throat> now let's get into that. What you got happening over in? All right, so. Uh, Johnny producer, if you uh, Google road and track BMW Ukraine, those four words, the article will pop up. Um, so there was there was somebody in Ukraine that, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the term technical, it, it's usually regarded as like a small pickup truck, like the Hilux, which is the four cylinder diesel um, t- Tacoma, basically, but. Um, that's usually what it is. They'll, they put a big ass machine gun and mount it in the back of a, uh, of a little pickup truck. But somebody in Ukraine took a BMW 600 series. God damn. You're still trying to type that shit out. It just came up. Uh, the BM U- Ukraine BMW technical. It was one of the auto fills and you skipped over it like a son. There it is. <clears throat> so somebody, yeah, somebody took a, a 600 series BMW and mounted like ripped the fucking trunk door off and mounted a big ass fucking machine gun on it, which is pretty awesome. But it also, you know, we'll get into some of the stuff going on over there cause it's important and it's happening. Um, it highlights, you know, what, what takes place, right. Is, is that for sure that car a month ago, you know, was probably a, a cherished, um, you know, bordering on luxury car that somebody was using, you know, for uh, transportation. And, and I'm sure they were proud of it. As you can see from the picture, like they ripped the trunk trunk off, they ripped the, the entire top off and they're driving around smoking people. And I think it's important to think about and, and let that context kind of register of what that picture represents, you know, again, which is, desperate times call for desperate measures, but also how in the literally kind of the blink of an eye, your priorities can shift almost 180 degrees. And I think that um, it, it's important to, to think about that and remember those types of things when we bitch about, you know, the Starbucks line being too long or whatever, you know. I mean, that's a nice fucking car that mm-hmm. somebody butchered and, and, you know, put a fucking machine gun in. So... You're you should be looking at it right now. Uh, we'll incorporate these clips into the into the episode, but that's pretty pretty fucking amazing. Yeah, <clears throat> in in several ways, you know. But um, some of the stuff happening over there, yeah, it just it goes to show how how what you will do to survive, <clears throat> yeah, or fight for survival. Well, and and just how how meaningless, you know, you know, I mean think about a lot of the things that we talk on the show about or even bitch about, you know, about Mm -hmm. gas, you know, not being available, you know, to be able to get this octane or 
being pissed that tires took too long to get in or, you know, fucking pick something that, you know, that we have as a con or as a, uh, a complaint in reviews, you know, for that matter, even bitching about people giving me, giving me a hard time about second gear kind of similarly is that, you know, when, when you contrast it to what's going on over there, there's really not much going on in most of our lives that, that really warrants bitching by comparison. And, uh, you know, that, that's important. Now, on the topic of Ukraine, you know, it's a very dynamic situation and, um, you know, there's a lot to consider, but, you know, people ask a, a lot uh, of our opinions on what's going on and, and what have you. And, you know, one thing that I, I think is important to, to think about or, or talk about, discuss even on here is, is the red line. And I'm curious, I, I would ask this, you know, to you, is that let's say you're the president you know, is, is there from a kind of personal constitution standpoint, a red line for you that as you watch things unfold, is there a point at which you would say, okay, that this has gotten bad enough or the atrocities are such that I am going to dedicate U S troops, you know, whether it's in conjunction with NATO or even unilaterally or whatever, is there a point at which you would do that? It's hard to say, especially because we talk about the, we sat there and talked about the balancing effect of, nuclear warfare and stuff like that, which is, it's on the table when you talk Russia versus U.S. or us going in and helping him. And as of today, you know, China, they're asking China to help Russia and all that now. And it's, which they denied, by the way, which yeah, is nice to see. Thank but, God. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard because we're watching war crimes. Shit, you guys went and fought for in another country. <clears throat> they were doing that shit like it was nothing, but they did it for years and years and years decades yeah and then this guy's doing it the difference is it's televised now and it's on our phones we see it in real time i'm not the president so he's seeing more information than i am yeah. i mean we can't see everything but the war crimes going on it, it's hard to say yeah we need to dedicate people i think they should have in my opinion let those planes go over there not us flying them, but let Ukraine get the planes. There's other countries trying to help that us as the United States have stepped in and like, I don't know, but then here's the rebuttal to that on my same end. As I'm pissed off, they said no the first time. How Poland wanted to do it would have basically looked like we're giving y'all the planes to the U.S. Yeah. Now y'all have to give them to Ukraine. So it makes it look like we're giving them the plane. Yeah. Here's the other thing. We give them rockets that shoot down airplanes. Yeah, I mean, that, that, so that's the thing is that, you know, kind of how, how any of us rationalize it is mostly irrelevant. You know, the big thing is, is if you're, and, you know, bear with me on this, is that if, if the, I, I don't give a fuck what the guy thinks, but if the intended consequence or lack of consequence is that we're, we're trying not to elevate or ramp up the emotion on Putin's end to, to drag in, drag us into World War Three then you have to look at it from how, how he's going to take everything that we're doing, mm -hmm. you know? And if I try to put myself in his shoes, which arguably is incredibly difficult because I don't understand what the fuck he's doing or why. But the fact is, is that, you know, to me, it's all kind of the same thing. No different than when we were in Afghanistan, there were reports of some Russian involvement of supplying some of the Taliban with man pads and, and rockets and, uh, certain certain things to help uh, you know kill our troops you know and so it's at that point you're like okay well now now we're basically fighting you and you know or you're guilty of interfering and and now some of our countrymen are dead because of your involvement at that point you know to me it's all the same fucking thing if I'm him you know mm -hmm. so um, you know it, it's interesting that kind of cat and mouse and tit for tat that you see are our media and government and, and kind of society, the way that they view things of, you know, this is okay, but this isn't, I would say for everybody listening right now, if you could pinpoint one thing, drop it in the fucking comments of what is the red line? Like what would have to happen for, and maybe we're already past that for some people. For me, we're not, uh, but I, I'd be curious to get everybody's take their own kind of personal constitution or red line as to what, uh, what would have to take place if you were the president before you say, all right, you know what, this is probably going to drag us into World War Three, but at this point we can't can't sit idly by. 
one of the bitches of it is that, you know, stuff like that happens all over the world every day. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's still going on in Afghanistan and Syria. You know, there's a dozen countries in, in Africa where shit like that happens day in, day out, where, you know, people get slaughtered because they're Christian or because they're Muslim or because they're women or, beca- you know, because they're the wrong fucking tribe or, or whatever. Uh, and we do jack fuck all about it. There's no media reporting on it. Nobody, nobody even knows it's going on in a lot of cases. And the, the media attention that this is getting, you know, it's it's to me it is a little strange. Um, in some ways, I, I I think it probably has more to do with ratings than anything else. Is that most people are glued to their fucking TVs for the last 15, 16 days, two, mm-hmm. you know, two and a half, three weeks. And uh, and that's a, a big part of it is that it keeps people scared and and kind of on the edge of their seat wanting to know what the fuck's going on because, you know, here's this basically first world country uh, and another first world country uh, at war, you know, where where it's, you know, things things and scenes like that hasn't been seen in that region since World War II. And, and while it is a big deal, it's, you know, there's a lot of things going on. But my point in bringing all of this up is, you know, for me, I, I one of the, frust- I'd say probably the most frustrating part about it is that you either do something or you don't do something. Like either decide, hey, we're going to get involved, and and if you are, then you do whatever it takes to you know to do it. And and in my opinion, you know that would look something like. And, and this is not me advocating necessarily to do it. I'm just saying, if the goal is to is to make it stop immediately and and cease any further damage, death, and destruction. If it were me, I would say, okay, here, you know, rounding up the the entire NATO alliance, I, I would say, here's the deal: you've got 48 hours to set your shit down, pack it all up, and get the fuck out of there and go home unimpeded. You know, you, you won't be fucked with on the way out, but you you can do that, and and that's it. Uh, or every fucking NATO country and the entire weight of their uh that that nation's military is, is going to come there at the same time and fucking destroy all of you mm-hmm. you know to me like it, it's it kind of has to be that like you either turn a blind eye and you leave it the fuck alone or you say okay you know we want this to stop and here's what we're going to do to to do it i i get the trying to take a measured approach but again like it doesn't really matter what what we think. It doesn't matter how I see it, you see it, how how anybody in this country or government, for that matter, sees it. What what matters is the person that you're trying to avoid pissing off to the point where they start sending nukes our way. It, it matters how how they see it, and they're kind of at that point where they they see it that way. Um, you know, so it, it's like if, if the goal is to is to stop it, then just fucking do it, or leave it alone, turn a blind eye, and and stop fucking talking about it. I I, I kind of think it's at that point a little bit, but yeah, I've been pretty much (coughs) for what, 14, 15 days now. Today's the first day I haven't turned on the news and just focused on what's happening over there. Even when we're talking about other stuff, I've been watching what's happening over there. And while it sucks for someone that gives a shit about people, it sucks watching it happen. But at the same time, there's nothing I can do, you know, nothing I can do except sit there watch send money to someone helping with the relief other than that there's nothing i mean it it sucks but then i seen uh who was it glover the other day there was somebody who all you americans bitching about we need to go over there and fight there's nothing holding you back from jumping on a plane and getting over there and start fighting yeah. you know which, which that's 100 percent true uh you know, there's plenty of people, freedom fighters over there right now, even Americans fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a bunch of Germans that pretty much, from what I read, quit their military. We're going to go over here and help. You know, who's to say they're like, okay, if y'all quit, the ammo's over there. Y'all go ahead. And not, I mean, I don't think Germany as a gov- I don't think Germany as a government would do would do or condone that, but. But, but I mean, there's a lot of uh, former U.S. military guys that that have gone over there and, and are helping in a supportive role. They're not picking up arms and battling it out with uh, with Russians, to, to my knowledge. Maybe some of them are, but um, all all the guys that I know that have gone over there, and come and gone, you know, haven't been doing any of that. They've just been helping train and you know bringing in medical equipment and 
and shit like that. But, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting time. There's no, no two ways about it. There's been a lot of things that have happened that I would not have thought would have happened. And, you know, I, I really don't understand what, what Putin is, uh, is thinking, frankly, you know, like I got, you got to give major props and this ain't me tooting our horn. I, we have an analytic where I can watch what countries are downloading our show in Ukraine right now. There's average of 10 to 30 people a week downloading. So for those of y'all over there that are listening, American, Ukrainian, whatever, Hey, we support y'all. And I want to say them are some bad motherfuckers over yeah. there. Hard as woodpecker lips. Dude, they're, they have gave a full out military response response. Yeah. And these are just bakers and grocery store attendants. I mean, it's the average civilian, the dude in the BMW. I mean, that's awesome. I, it, it sucks to say, but how would America respond? I would hope in that same way if some <clears throat> shit like that went down. I wouldn't say everybody would, but I would say a oh, lot of us. Yeah, would. you'd see a similar response as far as you know, former military and backwoods fucking rednecks and hunters and and gangbangers and you know, I mean, really, there there would be all all sorts of different conglomeration of uh, of individuals that come together and uh and would absolutely fight hard as fuck there's there's no two mm -hmm. ways about it there would be some that would turn tail and, and flee that's true in any in any country yeah I, I do find it um curious interesting the disparity between afghanistan's response to the taliban sweeping through there versus ukraine's response to russia coming in uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty marked contrast. And, and especially when you think about the several trillion dollars that we spent training and equipping 20 years of, of, you know, outfitting them and trying to train them and whatever. And in a matter of days, most of them, uh, dropped their shit and fucking hightailed it. You know, whereas, I mean, I've seen a, a bunch of different interviews and, and they kind of all say the same thing and echo the same sentiments in, in Ukraine where all of them are like, this is my home. I will fucking die fighting whoever the fuck tries mm -hmm. to, to take it from me. You know, um, there's just a very, very stark contrast and in, in attitude between, uh, between a lot of the, uh, folks in Ukraine versus, uh, I'd say the predominant Afghanistan response. But this may come off as a fucked up question to ask you, but you have supposedly a military experience. No, Allegedly. You, uh, you've been in the military but say you're a somewhat trained civilian, a hunter, and you hear Russian forces are coming, tanks, everything. Russian forces are coming. You're in another country and you hear the Taliban's coming. Which one of those are you going to be more fucking scared of? I mean, neither. Like, I'm not going to, I wouldn't be, you know, more concerned about one over the other. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, to me, uh, a a group that's trying to destabilize and and basically take over your country, uh, you know they're they're a, a, a an a list priority threat, no matter no what. No matter who it is. Yeah, I mean yeah. whether it's a band of freedom fighter, self proclaimed freedom fighter insurgents, or a a organized military, you know, because there's pros and cons to everything. I mean, there's a, an interesting quote by Kissinger years ago that. And, I, and I, I hope I don't fuck this up, but it's to the effect of a conventional army loses if it doesn't win. An insurgency wins if it doesn't lose. And, you know, so that there's there's mobility and, uh, you know, ra like rapid footedness and, and stealth and concealment and hit and get get out quick that, that groups like the Taliban and insurgency based fighting forces have that that a conventional army does not have. Yeah. Now conventional armies have, you know, huge amounts of firepower and armor and air assets and, and whatever, but that makes them bigger targets a lot slower. Need, need a fuck ton more resources, especially, I mean, you're seeing it unfold as we, as we sit here, you know, the, the, the Russian army for sure is nowhere near what it was cracked up to be what most people thought it was. Um, you know, the, the capability that it has while is still serious, 
is nowhere near as as high level as a lot of people thought it was. You know, yeah. the, the amount of trouble that they're having there uh, is an, is incredibly fucking telling as to the capability and competency of of most of it. There are some significant fighters. You know, they've got some very capable Spetsnaz special operations units and and some higher level guys, but not a lot of them. They're general purpose, you know, conventional army collective mean average soldier is at a pretty low level. They, they don't make jack shit. They're very young. Uh, so are ours, uh, but they're not very well trained, not very well equipped and, and are not doing a very good job. Frankly, they're disorganized. They're confused. Uh, you can tell in a lot of the, the movements that they're doing things that they're doing, things that they're not doing that they should be, that they're not organized and not very well trained and they're getting their fucking ass handed to them. I mean, the fact that that Putin is recruiting 16,000 some odd foreign fighters from Syria to come help out. Uh-huh. Dude. I mean, I like if you're at that point, two and a half weeks into trying to take over a, a country, you know, that's smaller than the state of Texas and, and has 40 million people and, and an army that's, you know, by comparison, laughable size wise and, and supposedly, you know, capability wise, um, you know, they, they should have been in and out in fucking two days. I mean, I can tell you the United States alone could, if we decided to, if we sent, you know, basically the full, uh, f- brunt, brunt or brute force of the, of the United States military to Ukraine to fight the Russians two, maybe three days. And it would be that the floor would be wiped with them. You know, yeah. based off what I've seen, it would be a joke, you know, like, I mean, we, we would walk through there with the same, especially at this point, you know, two weeks of them being out of food and, you know, stalled yeah. engines because they're fucking running out of fuel and, and demoralized and, uh, and, you know, ha- taking some pretty heavy casualties. Um, you know, yeah, we, we would walk in there and, and absolutely fucking level them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I saw one statistic, and this is probably conservative, that um, they reported that uh, a little over 12,000 Russian soldiers had been killed so far, which you think about, that's in, you know, at this point, 15 days, this will be, you know, a, a week behind or whatever, but um, that's more than, than that's, that's more soldiers in two weeks than the entire Afghanistan and Iraq war campaigns for the United States, mm-hmm. right? And that's... If you combine the two, that's thirty years of of sustained combat between the two of them. Yeah, you know, um, so that that's again, that's pretty fucking telling uh, in a lot of ways. You know, one in, in the in the calculations that they make, the miscalculations that they make, uh, the mistakes that that they push forward with, and the things that they do that they shouldn't, the things that they don't do that they should, uh, and also speaks volumes to the lack of uh, medical prowess and evacuation. Uh, importance that they that they're not putting on medevac platforms and forward operating bases with um, you know with with proper medical care and, and what have you. One of the biggest reasons why our numbers of of actual fatalities were were as low as they were for that amount of combat for for that amount of time was because of how uh, well buttoned up our network of of medical uh, professionals were. You know the the evacuation process, getting them to forward operating bases with physicians, assistants, doctors, surgeons, getting them stable and getting them to, to Germany. Um, and then ultimately to the United States saved, uh, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of guys lives, you know? So, yeah. uh, you know, again, it's, it's pretty telling, but um, it, it's a complex situation. It's for sure a mess. I'm not saying I have all the answers, uh, but I do think that there needs to be something decided on, as far as you either, you know, hey, you're on your own, you leave it alone, or, you know what, hey, we are going to get involved, we want to see this stop, and we're going to help you, uh, you know, to, to whatever degree it takes to, to help you win or at least keep them from taking over the country. If you, if you want to do that, then just do it. Yeah. I mean, the one thing you're talking about, how unorganized they were, they showed this on several outlets, that tank brigade. Yeah. That they didn't know what the fuck to do. Once they got attacked. No, I mean, you you can see it. I mean, yeah, that's just total fucking chaos. And, Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you know, I'm the first one to admit, like, war is very chaotic. You know, uh, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face kind of thing. And and then it 
kind of goes out the window and it's dynamic and, you know, but there's principles that you adhere to, um, you know, and if you've been trained and whether it's dog training, shooting, military operations, I mean, fucking whatever is that, you know, you practice something so many times to where it now becomes a conditioned response instead of a decision. Yeah. If you're trying to make a decision under pressure, you're going to fuck it up. You know, if you're reacting based on your training because you've done it enough times to just do it, uh, which is how we do it, um, you know, that's why we've had the success that we have uh, is because, you know, we, we have much, much better training than they do. But I was just talking the other day when <coughs> we went to lunch, the stuff y'all did in training, you know, where it was the same a couple times and then all of a sudden here's yeah. something random shit y'all weren't thinking of. Yeah. And it's out there and it's – yeah. Yeah, it yeah totally, they throw shit at you all the time. You yeah, know? it totally fucks with you. You know, yeah. it's it's a different deal. And it, like you said, it's, it's fucking weird times <coughs> we're living in right now. Yeah. And I mean, home, there, everywhere. Mm-hmm. It it shows the power of a cell phone now. Yeah. I mean, seeing, te- yeah, technology, the, the double-edged sword of technology is on full, full display. Yeah, one of the things I said, true freedom and wealth right now is not being connected to the internet. Yeah. And that shit, if you sit back and think about it, although we're sitting here talking on the internet and phones, but if you sit back and think about it, that's that's some powerful shit. Yeah. You know, hell, the story I was telling y'all about two kids out in our neighborhood playing around doing a harmless fucking prank and these people getting totally butt hurt. Mm -hmm. To me, I wasn't fucking angry at all. I thought it was fucking hilarious because, for one, these kids are outside. They're fucking playing. I mean, they're doing shit we used to do as kids and probably a lot less fucked up than I would have done as a kid. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, and then there's a Karen sitting there getting all kinds of butt hurt, and it's like, there's way more shit in this. I'm stealing out of your playbook. There's way more shit bad going on than to have to worry about this little bullshit. Yeah. Fuck, turn on your TV as I'm telling you to get outside. Turn on your TV, look at the news. Shit's yeah. fucked up. Then turn it off and go spend time with your fucking family. Yeah. Something none of us do anymore. Your fucking family. Yeah. Not your family, but your fucking family. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that fucking BMW shit, that's pretty fucking badass. Yeah, it's wild. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Put that up on the screen for the viewer. Yeah. You guys can't see what we can see, but yeah. uh, you, you wish you could. I promise you that. Yeah. It's, it's some good shit. Well, some of you might, some maybe not. Yeah, some maybe just be fucked up. It's about yeah. that time, huh? Yeah. So give give us your red line, what it would take for you to go to war, and then let us know on the affordable cars we got going on. If you have a question uh, today, I was kind of busy back and forth doing some shit, and you're asking them in the comments. I'm not being a dick, not answering you in the comments. We're doing questions and answers so we don't have to answer these weird-ass questions in the comments. Uh, just send us an email. We'll go through them, and we'll get it out the fa- the best we can. We're getting a lot more response, which we appreciate. So uh, ask.uninfluenced at gmail.com if you want to ask us a question. Thank you, guys. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and then do all that other shit. Go. Bourgeois bullshit. Yeah, the same old bullshit. And then make sure you're checking out Mic Drops. They're hitting every Friday at 10 a.m., I believe, every yeah. Friday. And sometimes we're throwing you in a bonus clip. So check it out. Peace, guys. Вот такие подарочки. Берем уже на озброєння. Вот так. Відповідно Таким дуже яскравим